1. Mantra is better than ATP, the only reason ATP is doing better on the charts is because Mantra was poorly promoted, so comparing her to Rosie is unfair, I disagree, Jenny did teasers, billboards, Jimmy Kimmel and music shows, but you're still saying Mantra wasn't promoted enough just because it's not charting as high as Rosie? The lengths y'all go to defend idols are embarrassing, APT has that star-studded Bruno Mars cosine, naturally, it's plastered everywhere and riding the wave, Bruno Mars is like a cheat code for charting, so the song getting heavy spins isn't some miracle. But just because Mantra isn't getting the same level of success doesn't mean it's a flop. And for Jenny solo stands accusing Rosie of payola, are you serious? I'll admit, ATP does seem to magically start playing after every song on Spotify, but is that a crime? It's just her label doing their job, Stan Twitter are acting like Rosie robbed the gas station or something. Artists like Miley Cyrus and Sabrina Carpenter have gotten the same treatment, and it's hardly a scandal, it's literally just clever marketing. Ensuring the song gets repeated listens, and guess what? It works, people should see this for what it is, strategic promotion, not some payola conspiracy. The obsession with pitting Jenny against Rosie is just sad, both songs were hits, yet fans still insist on this imaginary battle where one has to win and the other has to flop. Jenny's success isn't Rosie's downfall, and Rose getting attention doesn't mean Jenny's career is tanking. Some of y'all need therapy. 2. Kiss of Life aren't as popular as they seem, after the success of Sticky, you'd expect a boost in album sales, but their latest comeback Get Loud is tanking in both streams and sales, they barely scraped together 94,000 sales in the first week, sure, that's up 20,000 from their last release, but it's still low, for context, G Idol saw their sales skyrocket by over 600,000 after the success of Tomboy, Kiss of Life on the other hand completely squandered any momentum from Sticky, with zero significant growth to show for it, I disagree, the comparison to G-Idol feels a bit off, even before Tomboy, G-Idol had multiple hits under their belt, they had the budget, the brand recognition and an already stable fandom. But Kiss of Life? They're literally rookies from a smaller unknown label, they've barely even set foot on the field, yet y'all are ready to stack them up against the giants and act shocked when they're not charting on the same level, of course they're not, they've had a taste of success with Sticky. But expecting them to hit G-Idol's levels is just setting them up for unfair criticism, for a rookie group. The numbers they're pulling in are solid, a grand prix hit, better first week sales, and they sold most of their US tour, there's momentum here, they're doing better than most would a year in, comparing them to a well-established group is just lazy. 3. Espa's albums are a mess, their title tracks look like SM threw big money and effort into them, but the B-sides come off as cheap filler, generic and bland, I agree, look, there's no denying Espa's title tracks have that instant appeal. The flashy production, the Kwanya concept that feels futuristic and all the AI and cyber mystique they try to build up, but that's exactly where the disconnect comes in, you go into their albums expecting more of that same vibe, maybe some deepening of their concept, a fuller journey, instead, you get an odd mashup of songs that feel like they're from different groups with zero sense of unity, it's like they build you up with their title tracks and then serve a buffet of half-baked ideas as album filler. Comparing them to groups like Shiny or Red Velvet is dead on. Those groups have mastered the art of making even the quirkiest or most off-kilter b-sides feel like they belong, for example. Shiny can throw in a jazzy experimental track or a ballad and it'll still feel like Shiny, it's all coherent, it's all them. Same goes for Red Velvet, who can pivot between bubbly and dark concepts within one album but somehow make it work as a whole, meanwhile, Espa feels like they're stumbling through genre changes, unsure if they want to be pop, trap or experimental, and just end up feeling disjointed, sure, they have a few good b-sides like Lucid Dream and Yeppy Yeppy, but then they throw in tracks like Hot Air Balloon or Bahama, and I don't know what the heck is happening, it's like they're just there to meet the track count. 4. I'm honestly furious with armies. just look at Jin's new song, its chart performance, views, streams, everything is embarrassingly low compared to Jungkook or Jimin, the favoritism in this fandom is on full display, are you serious? Y'all need to quit the amateur PR act, the way some you morph into unpaid marketing interns every time a new solo release drops is getting out of hand, suddenly. You've got these self-appointed sales representatives acting like it's their solemn duty to push streams, likes and numbers for every member, especially Jean, RM, Suga and J-Hope, and if those releases don't chart the way Jungkook, V and Jimin do, well, then it's your fault for not streaming from your grandma's hamster's stepsister's phone, newsflash, fans don't owe BTS the kind of full-time around-the-clock hype that some people seem to expect. Fans are there to enjoy the music, not to run guerrilla marketing campaigns, big hits got the funds and staff for that, everyone's got their own lives and responsibilities, the constant guilt tripping and pressure to do more is exhausting, 
but what's worse is how this all plays into the company's hands. This reliance on fans to do their work has made them lazy and unmotivated to handle basic tasks, from translating content to promoting properly. Just look at Stacy, their promotions are non-existent. 5. JYP seriously needs to get its act together because Itzy's latest chart performance is a joke. A group of their caliber shouldn't be scraping the bottom on every chart out there. JYP are sinking hard. When one of their best charting tracks this year is still underwhelming, there's clearly a bigger issue at play. I disagree. First off, you're completely wrong about Itzy's Gold being one of JYP's best charting songs this year. Day 6 didn't dominate Korean charts for months to be disrespected. Like this, and what about N-Mix, Stray Kids and Twice? Can we normalize fact-checking before embarrassing yourself on the internet? Y'all making Itzy's so-called flop era sound way worse than it actually is, it's true, their title tracks lately have been all over the place, with less views, streams and weak charting, but they're in a decent spot already, they've got a solid fanbase, and at this point, they can coast off that, people will keep buying their albums, they'll still fill seats on tour, and as long as they stay profitable, JYP isn't going to be too pressed, Itzy might not be growing at a crazy rate, but they're not tanking either, they're just surviving in the middle. 6. JYP is not perfect, but it's the healthiest company out of the big four. Just look at Hybe's laundry list of scandals, SM beefing with half its artists and YG doing anything but their job. But JYP's groups are all doing well, and the company makes sure they take care of their physical and mental health by letting them take breaks whenever they need, I agree during the A2K survival show, JYP said that the three characters that they look for in their artists are honesty, diligence, and humility. And it shows, they're not perfect, but seeing a major company actually trying to prioritize their artists' mental health and downtime? That's progress, they've shown it with how they've handled tough situations for artists like Lia, Mina, and Jong Yoon, all of whom needed time to step back, that alone makes them stand out in an industry notorious for working idols to the bone. Plus, most idols who leave, like GOT7 or Genie, do so on good terms, and the fact that giants like Twice and Stray Kids have decided to resign doesn't happen by accident, these are big names who've clearly found a system that works for them, enough to make them want to stick around when most contracts are practically set up for escape plans, sure, JYP has its problems, but they've managed to avoid the Messier internal scandals and lawsuits that plague other agencies, they're putting effort into creating a solid stable environment focused on character, well-being and actual respect for their artists' needs. I know y'all will likely say I'm buttering up JYP, but compared to the big four, I'll pick JYP any day of the week. 7. I don't understand why people have such an issue with idol sexuality. So what if I say someone is gay or bisexual? It's often quite clear from their mannerisms anyway. Plus, if you think assuming someone's sexuality is wrong, you're the one being queerphobic, I disagree. It's ridiculous how people will scream queerphobia the second you say it's odd to assume an idol's sexuality. Like, since when did it become mandatory to speculate on a stranger's personal life? Somehow, the logic is that if you're uncomfortable assuming someone's orientation, you must hate queer people. It makes no sense, people forget that this isn't about selectively dismissing queerness. It's about not needing to guess any aspect of a stranger's private life. Sexuality isn't a casual on-display detail to be gawked at like the clothes they wear on stage it's something they choose to share or keep to themselves, and yeah, it's still intimate. It shouldn't be normalized to treat an idol's orientation like a detail you're entitled to know just because you're a fan. 8. Can you talk about Isna's debut trailer and the sound you think they're going for? I really liked the first trailer. Isna's debut trailer is hitting all the right notes for a concept that feels fresh yet sophisticated. They're building a vibe that's mysterious and chic, with visuals that are seriously polished. There's a depth in the design, the way they're using shadows, Lighting and nuanced filters shows a real commitment to creating a cohesive cinematic feel. It's not just a carbon copy of popular styles, it's familiar yet elevated, capturing a mood that's both mature and intriguing. The sound is blending. Sophistication with a bit of playful edge, they've crafted an instrumental that sits between bold and dreamy, keeping a youthful appeal without leaning into cliches, and them whispering that's me at the end of the trailer. Brilliant, it hints at their identity in a way that's understated but memorable. If Teddy can actually come up with some original tracks instead of his usual Blackpink knockoffs, Isna might just have a shot at something impressive. 9. I have a question about Kepler's Bahi. I know Kepler renewed their contracts with Wake One, but Bahi is original company. IST Entertainment is currently holding auditions for a new girl group. Do you think the group will debut and then Bahi will be added later? Or will the company wait for her Kepler contract to expire before debuting the new group? Well, Bahia's company is still auditioning so we can reasonably expect that debut production for the new group will start in the next one to three years. This lines up perfectly with when Bahia's contract with Kepler wraps up. 
The key detail is how long Kepler's contract extension will be. If it were anything long-term Wake One would have made a big announcement by now. Plus, some of the other companies involved will eventually want their idols back. Making a one to two years extension more realistic, which implies that Bahi will probably debut with the new group. 10. What did you think of Jin's pre-release I'll Be There? This track walks a tightrope, trying to sell itself as a feel-good anthem but sometimes feeling like a calculated upbeat pick-me track. Sure, it's got that upbeat vibe that screams positivity, but there's a fine line between genuinely uplifting and overtly trying to make you smile on command, but Jin's vocal performance stops it from falling apart, he sounds comfortable here, almost like he's enjoying this pop rock moment, and that sincerity in his voice does a lot to save the song from sounding too manufactured. The instrumentation deserves some credit too. Those jangly guitars and rhythmic beats bring a bit of indie flair, which is a nice touch, 